kick-ass live episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast. And today we got something special for you. And no, it's not the Scruff McGruff that I'm rocking right here. This is, by the way, if you're wondering what, what's going on with the righteous beard, Dorn. Well, it's not just because I like to be itchy like I am right now, scratching myself up like, man, when can I get this carpet off my chin? It's not about that. I'm suffering every day for the last two days because my wife is like, you got to rock that beard at the uh, Christmas thing for our 12 year old because I am Joseph and she is Mary. So enjoy it while it lasts. I'm chopping this bad boy down tomorrow morning. Enjoy it while it lasts. <laughs> But anyway, this podcast is not about me or my beard. This is about something much more meaningful and important. This is about Kirsten O'Donnell, who I have with us today, and her sharing her story with you on how she 5 extra her income in just four months. She went from about half a deal to a deal a month before we started to work together, and she literally went stratospheric in 5 extra production in four months. In fact, next month it's even better, and it's going to be six xing her production in five months. So, needless to say, some pretty awesome growth, some significant increase in production, and uh, we have her here. Kirsten, welcome aboard. Thanks for being with me today. Awesome. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. As always, I enjoy our our session, so I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. And for those of you who uh, are listening and watching, this is actually our second rendition of doing the initial stages of this interview with Kirsten because I messed up on pressing the right buttons in this console that just upgraded. These guys, man, these propeller heads are always upgrading software and adding new gizmos and gadgets and you know, upgrades end up being my nemesis because I can't keep up with all the upgrades. And so we are doing a second rendition. So you guys get like the best, the best version of both of us because we already done this before. So here we go with uh, the real deal second polished version because the first version, man, was awesome. This one's about to be double awesome. So I want to start off with a little bit about your story. What inspired you to get into this crazy, wacky business, 100% commission, you eat what you kill, no safety net as a loan officer. I'm curious about that. And um, what was kind of your uh, your dream or your, you know, your heart's call that got you to take that leap of faith? Why don't we start there? All right. So as I mentioned earlier, so I come from hospitality background, was in a school, always studying business, thinking I wanted to do accounting. And I got into it, hated it, wasn't for me. Uh, met my mentor, who is now my boss. I work with this company. And he explained to me what the job entailed and how I would be such a perfect fit for it and so on and so forth. So well, I was nervous, of course, scared of commission, 100% commission. That's always scary. Um, but I did it. I took the leap and I finished the courses, the test, got into it. And then um, my daughter was a big play on it. I, I forgot to mention that part. So I have a three-year-old now and I needed more. I needed some, I need more money, one, and I needed a career established too. And my fiance just was um, enrolling in the fire academy. So I was picking up more of the slack track for him to get through that. And it was just kind of timing. It was a leap of faith or a leap of commitment, I should say. Yeah. And Lord knows that takes some brass balls or some brass ovaries to take that leap, grow yeah. wings on the way down, um, you know, from having the certainty of a punch the clock job where, you know, you're going to get paid, but you're under that constraint under that, you know, glass ceiling of only being able to make a certain amount of money. Mm -hmm. Yes. You have the certainty of a paycheck, but you don't have the upside. You don't have the freedom. So obviously you, cast that vote for yourself and believed in yourself enough to say, screw it, let's do it. And decided to take that leap of faith out of the nest, grow wings on the way down, as I like to say. Yeah. And then here we are now um, on the front lines of capitalism in the real world. And you're unequipped and ill-equipped, just kind of winging it. And you've got a mentor, but you know, obviously things that our mentors teach us that worked for them 20 years ago doesn't necessarily work now. Um, in the 21st century with uh, just the new economy and the new way of doing things. So tell us about what that was like. I mean, when did you start actually beating the bushes for business? And what was that like for the first three or four months before we hooked up in terms of like the most painful plight of just trying to get your business off the ground with the counsel and the advice that you were being given 
and give us a sense of what that was like walking in your shoes when it comes to the most painful part of being in that uh, dark night of the soul, so to speak, as you went through that. Tell us about that. Well, let's set the stage. I was doing it from home with my daughter because at the time I didn't want to spend the money on daycare, which is very expensive. So I was cold calling on my patio for four hours a day with my daughter on the phone. I'm like, shh, get away, get away. I'm <laughs> trying to book these appointments, trying to make it get off the ground, so to speak. I mean, there's really no other way of doing it when you're commission only. You just have to chase it and establish those relationships. And the only way I knew about doing it was from what my mentor was coaching me is cold call, get that list of top producers, call them until they meet with you meet with them and the only spiel i had when i was meeting with them was we do have great rates and we have great service and we're going to close the deal quickly and that, that, that and so i did a i did a bunch of the meetings i did the hours upon hours of calling once i met with them on monday mornings it was call those same realtors over every monday with nothing to say so i was I'm, i can read people they didn't want to hear you they didn't want to answer the phone they were answering to be nice and then when they did answer, what are you going to say? How was your weekend? Right. Um, <laughs> you got a deal to throw my way? <laughs> yeah, hey, by the way, I, I'm sure you haven't heard a realtor asking for a referral lately. So I'm here at your service. Uh, you got any deals, any, any bones you can throw my way? <laughs> yes, exactly. So I did that for a couple of weeks, probably about two months. I was doing it and I was doing the appointments, but the contracts were not rolling in. I think when I, when I met with you, I was doing one contract a month that was probably lucky to get those from right. <laughs> what I'm doing, you know? Doing it the um, hard I, way. Yeah, I was definitely doing it the hard way. I mean, the hours put in for those one contracts definitely do not even compare. No. So I followed you on Facebook and that's when I made that call. I was like, I know I need more. I don't know what the missing factor is, but I know it has to do with marketing and bringing a better offer to the table than just the service and the rates and the standard across the board that everyone else is calling and offering. <laughs> right. I knew and, that. And for you in that season of making cold calls, people not giving you the time of day, trying to juggle, making all those calls while still trying to manage your daughter. And she's full of, you know, all that zip and vigor. And she's a kid. She wants to have fun. She wants to be with moms. So you're now juggling those two things at the same time. Meanwhile, the, um, the deals aren't coming the way you want the, bills are stacking up for you what was your biggest fear your your most painful foreboding fear that um was weighing on you in that difficult season when you were you know really going to the gunfight with the butter knife doing it the hard way well i'm not someone who i have let's just say this i have credit cards but i don't use them i am not someone who goes and swipes my card all the time so seeing that increase in debt happened slowly it was frightening i'm i was like did i make the wrong decision is this going to pan out am i going to be able to pay my bills with how i'm pursuing this at this moment like what do i knew i wasn't going to back out and give up but i knew i needed to add more because i yeah. couldn't live i couldn't live paycheck to paycheck like i said my fiance had just enrolled in the fire academy so i needed the money to be coming in and the stress the sleepless nights it gets to you so mm, yeah yeah so now you're waking up ha haggard, sleep deprived, feeling totally like a drag in your butt through the day. And uh, no one's waiting for anybody. They're not waiting for you to take naps. They're waiting for you to step up and produce. And mm -hmm. uh, that just makes things worse. I call that the downward cycle of suck. Because now not only are you doing it the hard way and heading east looking for the sunset, but you're feeling like crap because you're you know, not sleeping right because you're waking up in a, a cold sweat in the middle of the night because all the foreboding concerns and fears are weighing on you. The weight of the world is on you. And uh, that's, you're you know, you're that's you're a spe not really calling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, and, you know, that's a spe kind of suck that a lot of people, I'm sure, watching and listening to this can relate to from some season in their life, if not right now. Tell us about your secret motivation. So this would be like, you know, the thing that for you was the biggest reason why you felt like it was mission critical to win in this business. That maybe you didn't tell your parents or your outlaws or your friends or your boss, but in your heart, it was like, that was for you the biggest reason why you couldn't fail and the biggest reason why you were defiantly committed to win. What was your secret motivation? 
Ah, oh, secret motivation. That's a hard one. I mean, I had committed myself to making this a career. I took that leap. I took that leap. I made the decision. And to me, I just couldn't fail at it. I have a daughter looking at me to establish her future. Um, the schoolings in Florida are not the best. So in the back of my head is good schooling for her. That's not an option. It's mandatory. And it costs a lot of money to do that. So yeah. There was no giving up. There was no losing. It was what needs to be done to make this happen. Um, yeah. So for you, you had that mama bear instinct. It was like, I'm going to provide for my girl no matter what. It's do or freaking die, you know, whatever it takes. And it wasn't just about putting food on the table. It's about being able to be the mommy that your daughter deserves where you're winning for her, you're winning for the family and you're not about to let her down. That was it for you. That that was a must as opposed to a shit for you. Is that right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and so for those of you listening and watching, notice that that critical ingredient is not to be neglected or to be overlooked. The ingredient of success is and always will be inextricably linked with it being a should for you, not just being a mere must, but having that white hot fire burning desire where you will not take no for an answer, where you get to the point where it's like, there's failure is not an option, period. It's either win or freaking die. There is no backup plan. And until and unless you get to that place, you're not ready for your breakthrough. But obviously Kirsten came to that place. So here she is now, she's calling realtors every Monday. I can't imagine where she got that idea. It's not as if coaches teach you how to, you know, to do that. Cause you know, who wouldn't think that that would work calling realtors every Monday, knowing that every other loan officer trained by these people are going to do the same thing without a value proposition. I can't imagine why that wouldn't work. Right. <laughs> but uh, obviously I'm being facetious. So you've tried the cold calling uh, that didn't work. You tried doing the coffee meetings, you got the odd deal, but you know, you were just basically treading water. Was there anything else you tried aside from the cold calling and the coffee meetings to try and get your business off the ground? Or was that the main thing? Um, I did do a few open houses. I was doing those whenever they came across. Um, I wasn't doing the pop up at one and go introduce yourself because that, that just was so lame to me. I don't know. I couldn't do it. Right? <laughs> um, um, I couldn't do it, but I was, I was making connections with the calls and the people that were nice that I was meeting with and they were having open houses. So I was doing that, spending my weekend time that I should be with my daughter at these open houses that who knows if you're going to get a serious buyer. I think I did get one deal from it. That was it after the many hours. Right. <laughs> and I did a lot of networking events to try to get in front of realtors and just basically sell myself because I had no really other compelling offer besides the good rates and good service. And you can only, I mean, I'm a pretty nice person, but I can only sell myself so far. You know? Right. Yeah. I mean, having a nice smile and great rates and great service is a great start, but being able to have something unique that actually helps them push the needle on profit and performance in their business is definitely a, a mission critical piece that often is overlooked. And we were told so often if you just go out there and throw enough yogurt to the fan, something's going to stick. And that's probably true. You do enough cold calling, eventually something's going to stick. And something did stick. You're doing about one loan a month um, in spite of all the drudgery and the painstaking you know, cold calling you were doing. Uh, that was all you were able to drudge up. And so here we are now. I think it was, what, three months later we meet up? Yep. Mm -hmm. So three months of that dark night of the soul. <laughs> where you're you're literally tromping through that thick, mucky mud with concrete blocks on your feet, doing it the hard way, doing the best you can with what you know. And then you find us on Facebook, you see some of the you know interviews. What was it you saw or what was it that you heard that got you to say, what the heck, let's give this a shot. Let's see what these guys can do for us. Well, from the experience that I had already gained, I knew I needed some sort of compelling offer, some marketing and... I followed, I don't think you had the podcast at that time. I think I was simply following you on Facebook and the um, Mortgage Marketing Acceleration Group. And I was seeing the, and you must have done videos or something with current clients. And I saw the progress that they had and how it was marketing based. And I was very compelled by that. I was like, this is what I need. I need to know what else I should be offering, but I don't know. So <laughs> 
I needed to, I need someone to coach me. I need someone with the formula to give it to me so I could implement it basically. Right. And clearly what you're doing was not working at the level you needed it to. That was obvious and you needed no convincing of that. So mm -hmm. you, you thought, what the heck, let's give this a shot. Let's get on the phone with these guys. And of course the rest is history. Um, mm -hmm. Tell us about the moment where you just decided to say, screw it, let's do it. Obviously it was a bold, intelligent, strategic investment in your breakthrough that you made and you weren't exactly flush with cash. Right. You're just getting started. You're, you know, trying to put food on the table for your daughter. Your fiance is going to a fireman school and, you know, you're, you're not in a flush spot by any stretch of the imagination. What was it that got you to say, screw it, let's do it. In spite of the fact that what it was indeed a bold investment and good ain't cheap, cheap ain't good. This is certainly no exception. What was it in your heart that got you to, you know, feel the fear and do it anyways? Um, I justified it a million times over in my head on the call, but after the call, I learned more about the program entailed, what it had to offer. And that was a missing link for me. I knew that's what I needed. I knew if it, if it, if I didn't invest in it, what am I going to do? Continue on the same path I'm on and just hope for the best or hope to learn it along the way. And I'm just not that type of person. If I'm all in, I'm all in. Right. And what am I doing wasting countless hours if I'm not going to completely invest in a 100% commission job. That's just, <laughs> it kind of just seems silly not to. I feel like, why are right. you investing time if you're not going to take the full plunge? <laughs> right. So, um, as I said, I had credit cards and wasn't using them. And of course, I and I see people every day, they have thousands upon thousands of dollars in student loan debt that they don't even use. So I'm like, well, why, if you're not going to invest in yourself, then who are you going to invest in? So bingo. I, yeah. And as the saying goes, if you think education is expensive, try ignorance, right? Yeah. Doing it the yeah. hard way, heading east, looking for the sunset. You're going to pay either way. You're either going to pay 100x, 1000x on the back end through fruitless toil and frustration and trouble and struggle, spinning your wheels in the same spot in stagnation, or you're going to pay up front with a bold, intelligent, strategic investment in your breakthrough. And uh, as good old Benny Franklin once said, for the best return on your money, pour your purse into your head. That's what it was. For the best invest, return on investment, pour your purse into your head. And that's the whole concept here is to build your marketing muscle, build your mindset muscle, build your leadership muscle, so that when you go to the gym of capitalism to produce results in the real world, you have more muscle to flex. And that allows you to bring more value. And when you bring more value, you bring more dollars, more zeros and commas in your bank account. It's as simple as that. So you decided to do that. You're more committed to your breakthrough. You're more committed to conquering than you were your comfort zone. So you said, screw it, let's do it. And tell us about the skepticism that's naturally there when you took the plunge, because let's be real. Yes, you made a bold, intelligent, strategic investment in your breakthrough. Yes, you put your trust in yourself and your trust in us. Uh, to follow our proven plan. But there's always a little bit of skepticism, like, are you sure this is going to work, really? I sure as heck hope so, because, you know, I, I really went out, out on a limb here to, to do this. What was that skeptical try for you, where it's like, you know, the, the secret thoughts in your head that you're pondering when you're now in the program and you're wondering if this is actually going to work? Tell us about that experience. <laughs> well, buyer's remorse says the least. I <laughs> woke up the next day and I was like, what the hell did I just do? <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, man. Yeah, I definitely felt that. Um, once the program started, I was in, I think once I watched the first, um, for, I'm blanking on the word, the first um, module. Yes, module. <laughs> Thank you. The first module, I was I was feeling better about it. I was like, this is what I needed. It's exactly, it, it kind of introduces everything in a short glimpse. And I felt comfortable once I got to the first module. But up until that point, I know there's a couple day like grace period, I think before I took the first module, I was freaking out for sure. Right. <laughs> I was like, I don't even want to look at my card. I don't want to think about this. <laughs> 
fine. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so then I got to the modules and of course getting through the modules is a whole nother ball game. It was not easy. It was stressful alone. There were some tears of stress and anxiety and what the hell did I get myself into? Um, it's a lot of information and you have to be committed. I mean, I just was like, all right, I ended up getting my daughter into daycare. That's what we did. Um, we invested in that so that I could invest my time elsewhere. So I took another investment to say. Um, yes. At a time where now you're even more under the gun financially and you're still being bold yeah. and playing <laughs> offense, not just defense. Because notice it's pretty hard to win a game just playing defense. When's the last time you watched a football game or a hockey game or any kind of game where the person or the team won by playing just mere defense, no offense? You're never going to see it. We yeah. got to play offense and defense. So you're playing uh, offense in a big way. Uh, you're being courageous as hell. You know, you're you're definitely feeling the heat emotionally around it. And yet you're more committed to conquering than your comfort zone, as I mentioned earlier. And I want to really remind people how important that is because your current comfort zone is where all your current results are. So if you want to think about it as a circle, this is your comfort zone. So this is where your financial, current financial situation is, your relationship, your uh, sense of financial well-being, emotional well-being, your um, circumstances in life currently are all inside of the comfort zone. It's called what you're used to doing and what you're used to creating in your life. And all of a sudden you want to create a breakthrough outside of this comfort zone. You want to expand and you want to make more income, have more impact, have a better lifestyle create a life of freedom and prosperity that's way outside your comfort zone. And people expect when they get in a program like this or just in general in life, they expect that going for their dreams and creating a quantum leap breakthrough in their life is going to be comfortable. And like, where do they get that idea from? Right. It's like, if you want to double, triple, quadruple, quintuple your income, it ain't going to come through your comfort. It's going to come through you stretching out of your comfort zone every day. And that's exactly what you're describing is the fear the buyer's remorse, the overwhelm, the anxiety, that's all a sign that you're on the right track. That means you're on the growth track as opposed to the stagnation track that you were on inside of your comfort zone. And most people aren't willing to pierce through that terror barrier to expand into their dream. They just don't want it enough. But obviously you did. You had that white hot fire burning desire. So now here we are three, four months later and tell us about the kind of results that you got um, over the span of those four months. Tell us about what's changed in your life over the last four months in terms of production, productivity, income, all that. Give us an update. So I, I took my time with the course. I really wanted to digest it. I wanted to understand it. I was, I am new. Well, still am new to the business in per se in the grand scheme of things. And I really wanted to digest what it was that you were teaching. And there's a lot that went into it, daily routines that you had to get your mindset right to even be able to get to the good stuff. So you had to start there. And um, right. yeah, so I did the cold showers. <laughs> what kind of badass takes cold showers, by the way? Who in their right mind? I mean, come on, you're paying for hot water. Why wouldn't you take advantage of that? What kind of crazy cat would take a cold shower voluntarily without being like a crazy ass seal, Navy seal or something like that? Well, that's, you're going to have to find out if and when you have the, the brass balls or the brass ovaries to join a rigorous program like that, you'll find out. But nonetheless, tell us about for the curious and for the uninitiated, because I know there's people wondering what the heck was she thinking? What was the most meaningful most valuable benefit for you in taking the cold shower? I'm curious. Oh, pushing. It's even more pushing through your comfort zone. It's getting you fired up, getting you ready for your day. Um, you don't start off comfortable. I mean, <laughs> right. If you can do that, you can do anything. I mean, if you can get yourself to take a cold shower, you can get yourself to do practically anything. Did you find that to be true? <laughs> Very true. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I can't them every day, but I still throw them in here and there. <laughs> yes. And I'll tell you what, I don't take them out. I usually take my uh, Saturdays and Sundays off. Um, or if I'm sick, I'll definitely take, definitely take it off. But uh, man, oh man, if you want, if you guys want energy, like crazy energy, like 10 espresso shot energy, where you can feel 
that exhilaration and vitality like you never have before, like you're ready to run through a brick wall kind of energy, I'm telling you, go for the cold shower. The more you shrink, the more you soar. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> so tell us what else happened? What else, uh, you know, did you do? And what else did you see in terms of uh, an uptick in results over those first three or four months in the program? So yes, I like I was saying, I took like the first month to pretty much go through all the modules, digest it, maybe even a little bit longer, and then started implementing because I wanted to understand it before I got in. I was implementing somewhat as I went, but oh, I'm trying to remember, I feel like it's so long ago now. It's crazy. Right? Light year is here now, four months later. <laughs> um, but then I implemented the, I stopped the cold calls. Let's just get that out there. I stopped doing the cold Woo! call. Tell me what's yeah. life like? What's life like? Never have to do another dang cold call again. What's that it's, like? It's freaking amazing. I took that <laughs> I took that time and put it elsewhere. Let's just say that. That's hours and hours saved. So I'm calling who wants to hear from me. I'm calling with impelling um, offers to, to actually have a meaningful conversation. I mean, not just calling to say, hey, give me those leads. Like, hey, give me those deals. So um, that was amazing. I got to stop doing those. I implemented the automatic um, top realtor retraction campaigns and it was all done from there i booked i even booked i think i booked three top let's say two two that i'm still working with consistently and i haven't even rolled out another campaign since because i've been pretty busy and i want to be comfortable before i roll out another campaign to get good, more part on good problem team. to have good problem to have yeah. so i'm curious how many Realtors, did you initially upload into the, the campaign and how many appointments did you book? And then how many, and then you got two partners out of that. So break down the numbers for us. So I believe on the first campaign I rolled out, I did about 25. I didn't want to do anything crazy. So I wanted to see how it worked first. And I booked, I think three, three appointments out of that. Um, and that was first, in spite of a little glitch we had with the campaign, yeah. which, which we had fixed, but even with that glitch, you got those appointments booked. So it just goes to show you, it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, losers, yeah. winners take imperfect action while losers are still polishing up their perfect plans, just trying to get it just right, stuck in the uh, stuck in the parking lot with the emergency brake on. And yet you got out of the parking lot and you just took action, action, action. So you did those appointments. So you did how many appointments? About three, five? I remember, I remember doing, I think I booked five. I think I went to three. I think okay. after doing it, everything three. And so then three, and then yeah. out of those three, you got two partners. Out of that round, I booked, I got one partner. Then I did okay. it again. Okay. Then I did it. Tell us I about did. the next round. What were the numbers on the next round? They were very similar. I think I did another 25. I don't know. That's just my sweet spot for adding the realtors in there. I booked four appointments and then I got two partners out of those, which I'm still working with today. Nice. Um, yeah. And so zero I guess cold call. Yeah. Zero cold calling. Um, I spoke with them when they wanted to speak with me, which was great. I implemented the campaign, waited for the responses, booked the appointment and showed up. It was really no time needed, which was amazing. Um, meeting with people who are excited to meet with you, want to meet with you and not just pity meeting with you or feeling obligated because you keep calling their phone and they don't want you to call them anymore. So right. it was a great yeah yeah like this the sympathy yes like you know if you'll just get off my freaking back i'll okay. i'll meet with you and let you pay for my my lunch meeting or let you pay for my coffee you know that's not gonna generally speaking that's not gonna get you a solid vip partnership that's fruitful i don't know about you guys but my experience has been after 15 years in the game the sympathy factor ain't gonna get you soaring in your business. That's just, you know, personal experience. You guys are, chances are similar experience to that as well. So for the realtors that you have, tell us about the kind of caliber and quality of these partners um, and how many deals you've been getting from these partners. So I've gotten a, so we're doing the leads, we're doing the Facebook ads, which I implemented, which are awesome. Um, so I, a bunch of leads, a lot of leads. So right now, so last month I closed six loans last month. So November was six loans. So nice. one is freaking awesome. Um, that's not even counting the pre-approvals I have out shopping right now and all the leads I'm nurturing from the campaigns. So great improvement. And I mm -hmm. have, 
Yeah, I have another six scheduled for December. So I'm working on, and these are all with, for the majority, 90%, 80% are with the partners I booked from the program. And that's awesome. Yeah. And I haven't even rolled out another campaign yet because I'm just maintaining learning a lot as I go. Of course, you go from one to six deals. There's a lot to learn in the industry. No doubt. No yeah. Doubt. All that Take admin stuff, back. building your admin muscle, finding yes. a home for the loan, how to package the deal, all that minutia. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So what a great way to, to build that muscle instead of just trying to build it in theory, you're building it the only way you can in real life, actually with real deals to build your acumen, your mm -hmm. expertise and that, you know, that, uh, that muscle, it takes lifting real muscle in the real world, real deals, you know, that's the only way to learn it. So you're doing that, you're earning while you're learning, so to speak. And what I love about the numbers you gave me is it's not just a one and done, you know, one hit wonder where you have one great month and then you're dropped back down to one, but it's consistency, mm -hmm. six deals, then another six deals, like the pipeline is consistent. And that's yeah. been the elusive butterfly for so many mortgage professionals out there where they're up one month down the next, up one month down the next. And they're always worrying where their next deal is going to come from. All of a sudden now, within just three, four, three or four months of enacting this new system, you've got consistency in the production. Give us an idea of what that looks like in terms of the difference in, in revenue. I mean, you're probably making what, three Gs a pop? Yeah, I, yeah, about our average home price here is about 230. So okay. I've had a, a couple of that. Let's see. So I was going from 23, well, 20, right on $3,000 a pop and now time six. So, I mean, it's chances, a are your, chances are your average commission per deal went up too, working with these higher producing agents. True. Yeah. I mean, I feel like right now it's a holiday season. Everybody, I thought it was going to slow down, honestly, to be honest with you. I thought with Christmas and Thanksgiving, I'd be expecting slower months. So I'm only, I'm hyped to see what next year is going to look like when summertime hits again. And, you know, I mean, I'm excited. It's, it's good. I'm just trying to remember the numbers. Let's see. I think it, it varies. The home prices do vary. I'm working with yeah. the same kind of clients. It's definitely the average across the board of 230. I had a couple that closed in 300,000 range. Cool. So none of the jumbo ones yet, but I haven't, like I said, I've, I've kind of coasted where I'm at to get my feet wet and then I'll be implementing some more. So I'm doing the mailers. I'm focusing on my CRM, which by the way, I didn't have prior to this course. I have an amazing CRM now that does all the drip campaigns and the um, realtor marketing and keeping in touch with my past clients. So that's another implement, which will bring some business in 2020 as well. So sure. I did a lot of, did a lot in the last three months. <laughs> no doubt, you've been in all out massive action and that's plain to see from the things you've been sharing and you're just sharing the tip of the iceberg, really just giving us Cole's notes version. There's a whole lot more underneath all that if we had sufficient time to cover it. This is just the broad strokes Cole's notes version. Tell us about, the difference in how you experience your day-to-day -day life now in comparison to four or five months ago. Tell us about like, what's the most meaningful and life-changing difference you feel you've stepped into now that you've actually got a system to attract these solid partners, remove the cold calling drudgery and produce consistently you know, doing six plus deals a month and to actually have the ability to just turn on the faucet anytime you want. Want some more partners? You can, you know, bring on more partners. You know how to replicate this process. You've done it. You, you've done it twice before. You can do it again. What for you is the most meaningful, most life-changing impact of now having that in your life? Um, the time. Honestly, the big thing for me is the time. I'm mm -hmm. not wasting my time anymore that was it like time's valuable you don't get it back so the fact that i'm implementing it in my business i'm not just working on my business i'm working in my business um i have my evenings with my daughter because i'm getting everything done first off i'm waking up earlier i'm starting my day earlier with those morning morning routines so i have my evenings with my family i mean that's that's the goal that i wanted I have my own schedule pretty much. I work when I want and I make my schedule. So that's, it's pretty liberating. <laughs> How's it feel? How's the sleep lately, by the way? I imagine you're sleeping Good. a little differently. 
<laughs> yes, I'm sleeping very well. <laughs> How does it feel to have a good night's sleep every night? Like, what's that like to just wake up rested? Well, I still have a three-year-old, so don't take right? it that far. <laughs> Let's not go overboard here. We got a three-year-old. They're like I got the ultimate night sleep night killers. Night. You're yeah. going to think it's night tonight. It's cold right? season down here. <laughs> but you got to be knowing that self-inflicted sleep deprivation is like, you know, so uncool because, I mean, the three-year-old already does enough as it is. So to do to make it matters worse by inflicting ourselves with our own worry and anxiety and sleepless nights. Yeah. Praise God, that's behind you. Yes. Um, what are you most excited about in your life right now? I'm excited about the future. I'm excited about my career. I'm excited for the money difference that's going to be coming in and the opportunities that come with it, the vacations I want, the goals that I'm trying to crush. You know, everything's just life is exciting. There's no reason to take any of it for granted. That's for sure. And you're just getting <laughs> so next warmed year, up. Mm -hmm. Sky's the limit. You were saying next year. Sorry, I inter interjected. I there. Next year is just more goals that I'm adding on that I'm ready to crush. You know, it's less worry, less anxiety, and more planning and more conquering. That's that's how I'm looking at it. Yes, yes, yes. And I feel your energy. I feel the excitement. I feel the gratitude. You're in a great spot. You're just getting warmed up. You're a winner. You're a champion. You're a dream achiever. You're a goal crusher. That's just who you are. You're building that identity every day as part of your morning routine. You're creating that magic morning routine every morning. So you continue to cultivate that certainty and that gratitude and that excitement. It doesn't happen by accident. It happens by design. So you made that happen. You created that. And I just acknowledge you for your courage. I acknowledge you for being willing to put faith in yourself, believe in yourself, you could do this and investing boldly in yourself and knowing that if you don't invest in yourself, who will? If you mm -hmm. don't if you don't make a stand for your future and make a stand for your family, who will? And you did that. And here we are now, you know, 3 4 months later now and you 5 6 x your business. It's incredible. So you should feel very proud of that. Uh, you're just getting started. I can't see why you can't get to 10 deals a month in the very near future and just have that be your floor, not your ceiling. And mm -hmm. have you continue to just go stratospheric and be a shining star in this industry. So kudos to you. So happy for you. From my heart to yours, I'm just super proud of you and so blessed to be part of your breakthrough. Thank you. Thanks again. I mean, it's all wonderful. It's something that's not going anywhere. That's that's another thing. It's you invest in yourself, but you have it forever. You know what I mean? It's yeah. The knowledge, the nuggets, everything they say with you. I can go rewatch the, the videos that I learned from and just refresh if I need to. Or if you need that mindset training again, I can just turn on those mindset videos and revamp because sometimes you do get in your own way and your old habits do die hard. So I try to keep it fresh. I listen to the podcast. I listen. I'm reading. I'm reading way more books, by the way, awesome. <laughs> than what I was reading before. So it's all it, it's exciting. It's exciting to have and the progress is to say the least exciting. <laughs> you are blossoming into a bigger, better version of yourself every day, not because you want it, but because you're going after it. Yeah. And so again, this is uh, a testimony of the difference that someone who has courage and someone who has a big dream and is willing to fight for their dream and is willing to invest in themselves to claim their dream, what they can create in their life. You can have anything you want in your life, guys. If you can just simply commit to your dream and not settle and equip yourself to win. So you're not showing up to the gunfight with a butter knife. You're showing up with a freaking Uzi ready to kick ass, take names, chew bubble gum and crush it. And that's the only way to do it, guys. Show up to win. There's no brownie points at the bank for doing it the hard way. So that being said, if you guys have been digging what Kirsten is uh sharing, if you're picking up what she's laying down, if you can relate to her story, if you can step into an intimate interaction with her journey and be like, yeah, I can so relate to that. I can, I can relate to the, the frustration, the stress. I can relate to worrying where my next deal is going to come from. I can relate to wanting more and noticing my ways not working. If you can relate to her story and you're defiantly committed to stepping up your game in 2020 and beyond, not just a little itty bitty incremental step up, but we're talking about a quantum leap breakthrough step up. We're talking about adding an, at least an extra $100,000 plus to your income, but not working harder, not putting more hours in, 
but getting more from the hours you're putting in and getting yourself to a place where you're able to be more potently profitable with the time you have. So you can have more time with your family, like Kirsten's talking about. You can have that peace of mind and that connection and those magical moments and those adventures and those vacations and not have to skip a beat financially, not even bat an eye financially. If you're ready to make 2020 your absolute best freaking year yet and to be able to work smart instead of just working hard, I invite you to take advantage of the first step in the journey that Kirsten took advantage of just four months ago. It's a breakthrough call where we lift up the hood in your business and we look at what's working right now in your business. What's not working? What's holding you back? What are your constraints? And we look at what you want to create in your life, in your business, in terms of income and lifestyle and impact. And if we can help you create that breakthrough, by all means, we will show you how, just like we did for Kirsten. If not, if we can't help you, we'll be the first people to advise you, you know what? This is not the right fit. Here's what we'd suggest instead. Either way, though, you'll leave the call with massive value. Most importantly, massive clarity like you've never had before. And chances are we'll have some fun along the way and have a true connection, a true meaningful connection from one fellow human being to another, from soul to soul, from heart to heart. We're here to help you create a breakthrough, not just help you make you know, a step into your business with a quote unquote sale. That's not what we do here. We're not doing sales here from a standpoint of just trying to make a transaction. We're here to change people's lives. Only if they're truly committed, only if we can help them, only if we have the right synergistic fit. So let's explore, let's connect and explore and see what it takes to really create a breakthrough in your life. The way you take advantage of that is simply go to mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. That's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply, just the way you see it on your screen there. And before we go, Kirsten, if there was one thing you could say to our audience that are kind of sitting on the fence or like, hmm, you know, I've heard of Dorn. It looks convincing. It looks interesting. Definitely thought provoking. Very cool story. But I don't know if I'm quite ready just yet. I don't know if I'm quite ready to get on the phone with these guys. What would you say to someone like that who's wanting to create a breakthrough in their business, but still kind of on the fence around reaching out for help? I'd say look at the time you're spending not doing it. Look at the energy you're putting into staying in your comfort zone. See where it's getting you. If if you're not happy, then what? Why stay stagnant? Just trust in yourself. Take that leap of faith, leap of commitment in yourself to get where you want to be. To get where you're working so hard for, anyways. I mean, it's just if you don't make action, you're not going to get action. If you don't create action, you're not going to get action. So you can't expect it to come to you. You got to go to it. <laughs> That's it. And you have to be willing to put the work. It's not easy. It's definitely not easy. It's not handed to you. It's not given to you, but it makes all the more enjoyable once you, once you conquer it, you know? <laughs> yeah. So worth it. You're not going to be wishing, man, I wish I played it more safe now that you've six X your production. You're not, you're not thinking, man, I should have just kept, you know, doing what I was doing. I should have just kind of, you know, avoided, you know, any turbulence and trials and tribulations. I should have played it a little more safe. Screw freaking that, man. Look at your life now. The adventure, the peace of mind, the financial security, the fun, the excitement, the, the better sleeps, all that stuff. The pride of accomplishment. It is always worth it, guys. It's always worth it to win. And if we keep doing what we've always done, we'll keep getting what we've always got. It's the definition of insanity to keep doing the same thing, expecting a different result. And if you guys are just done with doing it the hard way and you're like, man, I'm just so done spinning my wheels here. I'm so done being in this cul-de-sac of frustration, in this rut of stagnation. And you're not willing to go another freaking day like that. That's when you know you're ready for your breakthrough. And that's when you know it's time to reach out. Let's connect. MortgageMarketingCoach.com forward slash apply. Let's see what we can do for you. Let's give you the clarity you need to create your breakthrough once and for all. All right, guys. Kirsten, it's been such a pleasure and a privilege. I feel so blessed to be part of your journey in some small way, but it took your courage. It took your faith. It took your rigorous action every single day to create this incredible breakthrough you've created in your life. And you absolutely deserve every ounce of success you've had. And you're just getting warmed up, baby. We're just getting started. We haven't even scratched the surface of the surface yet. We're just getting warmed up. So super excited for you and I uh, can't wait to see what 2020 holds for you and your family. <laughs> Me as well. Thank you so much for this opportunity and we will be in touch. I can't wait to 
have this conversation again in another six months and see where we're at. So Absolutely. <laughs> Celebrations galore. Here we come. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been talking to the one and only Kirsten O'Donnell on the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. This is Doran Aldana, the mortgage marketing coach coming at you from mortgagemarketingcoach.com. Book your call if you've not yet done so, mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. It won't cost you a thing to have a chat and connect with us, but it could cost you a lot not to. Doing it the hard way ain't going to get you paid at the level you deserve. So let's get on the phone and let's connect and let's see what we can do to create a breakthrough, y'all. Have a great day. Go forth, take massive action, bring massive positive energy to that action with gratitude, excitement, that sense of victory. Feel that in your heart now and take massive action while you do it. Chances are you're going to get massive results. Thanks for being with us, guys. Peace. We'll talk to you soon.